Hello friends and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen where I know it's easy to half peach it when you're just cooking for yourself, but you deserve better. You deserve this luscious stack of mini vegan waffles with juicy berry sauce and whipped cream and this savory vegan katsu and rice and this chocolatey cereal treat for one. This gnocchi with bolognese, well, maybe you deserve the convenience, but let's start with breakfast, shall we? With the delectable berry compote for our waffles, drop a half cup of frozen or fresh berries in a saucepan with a couple of tablespoons of either sugar or sweetener. Turn on the heat to medium and let the berries thaw and the sugar melt. You might be tempted to add water, but just hold that impulse. The sugar will melt and the berries will release all the water you need. And if you're using an erythritol-based sweetener, it will melt just like sugar too. Not sure about other kinds though. I'm just breaking up the berries a bit because I don't want big chunks, but what you do is up to you. By the way, if you have some berry jam in the fridge, you can certainly just use that for convenience sake. Remember, there are no rules. Except if you are going to make your own homemade berry compote. Once this comes to a boil, let it bubble for about a minute. And then it's done. Set it aside to cool and let's get our vegan whip ready. You'll want a fully chilled can of full fat coconut milk like this. Or not quite like this. This is usually my favorite brand of canned coconut milk, but as you can see, it's not very firm today. I tried to continue anyway with a little vanilla extract and a tablespoon of icing sugar, but there's too much water content in the cream today. So I scrapped that batch and opened another can. Don't worry, all the leftovers can be used for baking or even throwing into a curry. Much better as you can see. With this whipped coconut cream ready, you can pop it in the fridge for now and let's make some waffles. By the way, this video was actually inspired by many people who loved my first vegan for one recipe video, but also by the super cute mini waffle maker. You should be able to use my waffle recipe in a regular waffle maker, but I just could not resist the size or the color or the price. Very inexpensive on Amazon. I have it linked in the description if you want to check it out. And it comes in all sorts of colors and prints and waffle designs. I'll give it a thorough wash and dry first to get rid of any manufacturing residue and then let's start preheating. This little waffle iron heats up fast, but we'll get the batter done in about the same time. As always, all the ingredients will be in the linked blog post along with the printable recipe down in the description box, so check that out afterwards if you like. Start the dry ingredients with 4 tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I'm using regular, but you should be able to use a gluten-free 1 to 1 baking flour as well. Then 1 teaspoon of sugar or sweetener, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, not baking soda mind ya, and a pinch of salt. Mix that all together to distribute the ingredients throughout. Then separately, measure 5 tablespoons of soy milk or any plant-based milk that you like. A teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. A teaspoon of melted vegan butter or coconut oil. And an eighth teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mix it well. Then wet goes into the dry ingredients. Stir just so everything is well combined, but back off as soon as you don't see any more dry pockets. If you see lumps like this, that's totally fine. This batter shouldn't be totally smooth anyway. 
When this waffle iron is fully preheated, the light on the top goes off and we're ready to make waffles. And to prevent sticking, I'm going to add a little coconut oil and brush the plates thoroughly. And scoop two tablespoons of waffle batter right into the middle. Close the clamshell and enjoy the sizzle. And the steam, the vanilla scented cozy steam. And by the way, you can totally add a pinch of fall spices for an even cozier vibe. When the steam starts to get real thin, you'll know the waffles are getting there. And when there's no visible steam or barely anything, that's when you know your waffle should be ready to release. Beautiful, but it does look like I could have used a bit more batter. The next will be even better. In the meantime, cover your cooked waffle with a cloth to keep it warm. And continue on with the rest of your batter. Now in about 15 minutes, we've made fluffy vegan whipped cream with sweet and syrupy berry compote and mini waffles to stack up. Lovely. At this point, take a picture to commemorate this moment of taking the time to treat yourself and enjoy. These waffles are so light and fluffy, wonderful with the creamy coconut whip and bright juicy berry sauce. I don't want to tell you what to do, but uh, you kind of have to try these. They're so good. You won't regret it. Moving on to a less involved lunch, I think we all deserve very clearly labeled convenience meals that are made with simple ingredients and in glass jars that are nice enough to keep. I'm more skeptical about the gnocchi, but let's see how it goes. This is actually my first time using Vegan Touch food products. I bought them after seeing them on the Edgy Veggies Instagram story and uh, she kind of convinced me, so I had high expectations. In two minutes, the gnocchi is ready. Let's put it here for now. And while we have hot water, cook some frozen broccoli. Do I love the taste of cooked frozen broccoli? No. But do I love the convenience? Yes. Now we can get rid of this water and in goes the vegan bolognese. It smells nice. The taste is really tangy, so I'm balancing it out with vegan sour cream. And 
hand grated vegan parmesan because I have it and why not? I love how this sauce already has the protein. It's full of tofu. The flavor is nice, but on the bland side, to be honest, and at the same time, very tangy, so I would probably like to balance it with some more sweetness. The gnocchi is like Play-Doh, though. Maybe I overcooked it? Maybe you should never have plastic sealed pre-made gnocchi? I don't know, what do you think? In any case, I would certainly buy the sauce again. It's basic, you can totally level it up if you want, but if you don't want to make the effort, it's still very passable and convenient. Plus, the jar is cute. I can hardly wait to finish it, get the label off, and store some nuts or beans, or both, or make a dry soup mix in there. What do you think? Any ideas for that? Please leave me your suggestions in the comments below. For dinner, you're gonna love this vegan katsu on rice for one. Well, I did. Preferably, you start making your rice first, since it should be done in 15 to 20 minutes. And if you need instructions for that, you can see my post on how to make rice perfectly on the stove every time. But for this, I'll assume that you have that skill down. Also, preferably, you'll have a half pound of firm or extra firm tofu. Unfortunately, I didn't realize I was out of that and only had medium firm in the fridge. But we can make it work anyway. For the tofu katsu pieces, we want wide, somewhat thin cuts. This is a full pound, so I'm going to use half for one serving. And put the rest away for later. And then dab the tofu dry as I can. And then set that aside on the dry part of this kitchen towel. Get some parchment paper and cut out a couple pieces that are just a bit bigger than the size of your tofu pieces. Then just set those aside for now and we can make the wet mix for our wet and dry dredge. Starting with a tablespoon of my vegan aquafaba mayo. I have a recipe if you want that. It's a super low cost vegan mayo and it tastes amazing. The recipe as always is linked in the description. Add a tablespoon of soy sauce, then a little minced garlic and onion powder. Get everything out of your measuring spoons and mix that up until it's pretty smooth. Next, let's prepare some panko crumbs. Always make sure you have extra panko crumbs on standby. And season them with a little salt and a little white pepper. And if you have it, MSG. If you don't, you can add a little pinch of sugar and a little pinch of salt. But MSG is better. Then mix that all up too. Now I can attempt a clean two-step dredge. And by that I mean spread a thin layer of the mayo mixture on the tops of your tofu. And get the sides too. Use a spatula to lift one up and flip the mayo side onto the panko. Now you can spread more mayo soy sauce mix on the other side and envelop the whole thing gently in crumbs. Really pat it in there. Get your parchment paper landing pads ready and lift your panko crusted tofu. Shake off any excess ever so gently and land. Then on to the next. You'll need to spray with a little oil if you want to get them nicely browned and then air fry for eight minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit per side. Of course you should be able to bake or pan fry these, but I haven't timed it out for you, but I'm pretty sure you can easily figure that out, right? While your tofu are cooking, make some katsu sauce if you don't already have some. It's easy. With a tablespoon of ketchup, a teaspoon of vegan Worcester sauce, a teaspoon of vegan oyster sauce, aka Chinese mushroom stir-fry sauce, and a couple teaspoons of sugar or sweetener. 
and mix that up. By the way, if you're a regular viewer, you already probably know about vegan Worcester and vegan oyster sauce, but if you don't, you can check out my links in the description to find the Amazon affiliate links. Eight minutes are up, and I went to flip our tofu katsu. But to be honest, I think next time I'll just remove the parchment and keep air frying without flipping for another eight minutes, because uh, kind of made a mess here. But it still turned out beautifully. Our rice is ready now, and I made a little bit of lettuce. Cabbage is more common, but I didn't have any today. And I think lettuce tastes even better. Lay down your tofu katsu. And on goes our quick and easy katsu sauce. And some vegan mayo for added richness. Green onion for freshness and a sprinkly of toasted sesame seeds for toastiness. Time to dig in. It's so good. I wish I could give you a bite to try. But I guess you'll have to make it yourself, so I've written the recipe out in a printable format that you can grab easily on my website, marystestkitchen.com. Link in the description box. But don't go just yet, because we still have dessert. Start with the chocolate. I'm using the brand new vegan milk chocolate from Purdy's, which, if you didn't know, is an iconic chocolatier from my hometown of Vancouver, BC, so it is super nostalgic for me. However, you can totally just use whatever vegan chocolate chips you have. Divide your chocolate into a little 15 gram portion and a 25 gram portion. I'm using a scale because it's handy, but you can totally eyeball this since this recipe is very forgiving. Pop the smaller amount in a microwave safe cup. Add a tablespoon of peanut butter or almond butter or pea butter or whatever similar thing you like. And then one teaspoon of coconut oil, refined because I don't want the coconut flavor. An eighth teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I added a pinch of salt here, but you don't really have to, especially since most nut butters already have some salt. And microwave using 10 to 15 second intervals just until it's like this melted, although the chocolate might still look solid. When you mix it, it will easily dissolve. Immediately add some crispy cereal. I use Rice crispy style cereal, but I think this could work with all sorts of puffed crispy cereals like cornflakes or vegan Cheerios or like smashed up pretzels, whatever you like. Probably you can use whatever you have. Then grab a small ramekin or a muffin tin, Pop in a parchment liner and spoon your cereal mixture in. Press everything down so it's nice and even and you can chill this in the freezer for a few minutes while you make the chocolate ganache topping, which consists of your remaining chocolate and a tablespoon of peanut butter or pea butter or tahini or almond butter or whatever you like. Again, this is your chocolate crispy cereal treat and there are no rules. Microwave like before, just until the chocolate is melty enough to mix and dissolve. Get the base out from the freezer and pour over top. Maybe give it a little swirl. Then you can chill it in the freezer for 10 to 15 minutes and it will come out nicely set like this. If you're not ready to enjoy it right away, just cover it and leave it in the fridge and have it any time. But I don't know about you, I am ready. The ganache is so creamy and delicious. The crispy rice cereal in there makes me think of Nestle Crunch Bars. So nostalgic, but also leveled way, way up. 
And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video and let me know which recipes you want to try most. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really helps me out and subscribe if you haven't already. For more easy vegan recipes, often for one or two people because that's the life I'm living these days. However you're living these days, I hope you stay safe and well and happy and I'll see you next time. Bye for now! Thank you.